So let's look at what is happening. The Indian Space Agency attempting to become the first to land a spacecraft near the South Pole of the Moon. Uh, this is India's third lunar mission, and its Vikram lander is due to touch down in about three minutes' time. We will have, we hope, live pictures of that. You can see some of mission control in India there. Uh, inside the six-wheeled rover, which, if all goes to plan, will roam the lunar surface getting images and data. I love the idea. Scientists believe craters uh, that are permanently in the shadow of the dark side of the moon may hold frozen water. Let's speak with Dr Timothy Davis, space expert and reader in astrophysics at Cardiff University. Timothy, good afternoon to you, sir. Ian. Nice to have you with us. Um, straight question, why are they there? Not to just look for some water, surely. Well, water is a uh, very valuable compound on the moon. So if we ever want to build a base there, for instance, we're going to need drinking water. It costs about a million dollars to ship a water a liter of drinking water to the moon. So if we could find uh, supplies there, that would be great. But that's not really why they're going. They're going for the scientific reasons, uh, both to understand where water comes from in our solar system, uh, to test the uh, tenuous atmosphere of the moon and to explore this southern region that's completely unexplored and of course for all the geopolitical reasons yeah. uh, that India has for wanting to be a space power they're now about 50 meters from the moon's surface there with their their lander uh, so wow. it's all going well so, so far. it is is it's bang on target uh, ready to land uh, and as you rightly say there's there's global house points in the in the space race of course um, no one's walked on the moon have they since man last walked on the moon Yes, indeed. So uh, after in the 70s, after the space race, people quickly lost interest. The Cold War moved elsewhere uh, and we sort of uh, left the moon for a while. But there's a new space race really starting to hot up now. Uh, Russia attempted to land there a couple of days ago and completely failed. Well, it looks like the landing has been successful there. I think you can yes, see. Yes, I think we can uh, see the images there that the uh, we're, we're getting... I think it's possibly a slight delay in some respects, but there is a uh, jubilation, uh, it seems, in uh, their, their central control, mission control. There's the uh, Prime Minister waving the Indian flag. Everybody seems happy. Mr Modi is certainly, that's the happiest I've seen him look in many years. Um, and it seems it's happened, and that was all rather quick, but bang on target, Timothy, by all accounts. Yes, it looks like things have gone very, very successfully, so... A couple of years ago, the previous mission here had a problem with the lander that stopped it landing. Uh, this time, no such uh, such concerns. It looks like everything's gone very well indeed. In terms of long-term uh, plans as to what, what happens, I mean, is, is it about habitation on the moon, a human habitation on the moon? Is that is that a plan? Could that happen? That's certainly part of what they're exploring here. So obviously there's many scientific reasons to go to the moon anyway, but beyond that, the space exploration regions are are quite fast. So obviously drinking water for astronauts and people based on the moon is one option and that they're exploring here. But also if you want to explore the solar system, uh, the moon is a much better place to base your rockets than Earth. You don't have to climb out of Earth's gravity in order to get a rocket from the moon uh, deeper into space. So if you could use the water there to manufacture hydrogen and oxygen to fuel your rockets, then that's a big space exploration reason to explore this uh, area of the moon that's supposed to have a lot more water hidden in those dark craters. Yeah, we're trying to get the pictures as well, Timothy, of the actual landing. It seems to have eluded um, the... And nothing to do with us at this end, by the way, but the, 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 the actual moment that it touches down, as it were. Um, and those pictures don't, at the moment, seem forthcoming. I'm sure they will um, eventually. Um, at the weekend, of course, uh, Russia gave something similar a go, but not with the same spectacular results, Tim. Indeed, yeah, they uh, had a, had an unfortunate problem with the lander and uh, and that crashed into the surface. So uh, space exploration is hard and it's not something that the Russians have done, as you said, since the 70s. Uh, and so this was their first attempt, actually, uh, and it went wrong. And that is what happens in space exploration. And I'm sure they'll try again. Uh, but, yeah, it just goes to show that this isn't easy what India has done here. Yeah. Yeah. Um well, where did the UK dovetail into this entire, the, the bigger picture here? Obviously, our, America, our closest allies. We have a lot of scientists and uh, big brains in this country that work within our own space programme and, and elsewhere, etc. What, what, what is our input into this, this wider area? Yeah, so I think we obviously have a huge scientific input, both uh, by collaborating with NASA and also the European Space Agency. 
Uh, we have a lot of experts that help with that. And we also have a lot of space industry here in the UK, both uh, things like Airbus uh, and Astrium, uh, manufacturing satellites and boosters and uh, BAE, for instance. So a lot of space industry as well as the scientific input. Uh, and you've seen, I suspect, uh, you know, Virgin Space ran into some issues, but there are many other mm. rocket companies, uh, startups based in the UK. So we have a vibrant space industry. Uh, we're not quite landing our own uh, people on the moon quite yet, but uh, we're involved in all those missions and yeah. we'll be taking part in all the scientific uh, validation of those as well. Indeed. Uh, a few years ago, Ben Elton wrote a book called Stark. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Timothy, but uh, th th essentially uh, about how a load of rich people got fed up with planet Earth, essentially, and just moved to another planet. I, I, I wonder whether... <laughs> it's, are, we, are we heading... How soon could we be in that place? I yeah, can see I, Elon I Musk someone... building a very nice place over there. <laughs> I, I can see him attempting it. I think the truth is that we don't know of a planet B that would really support us. Both the Moon and Mars are basically dead worlds. We would mm. have to take everything we needed to survive there. You know, if we can find water there, that obviously helps, but uh, there's so much more we need rather than just water. So, yes, we could sustain bases there, but they would be need to be in constant contact with the Earth, receiving yeah. supply ships, etc. So. I think a self-sustaining colony in our solar system is uh, a long, long way away, uh, but certainly something that uh, may come and uh, would have great scientific rewards. And it is the is the idea the moon sort of becomes a, a kind of hub, if you like, to further exploration. Is that is that crudely put the point? Yes, exactly right. So that's certainly one of the goals: is you make the moon your gateway to the universe. Yeah. So you base your, your rockets there, you refuel them with the material that you might manufacture from this ice that they find, uh, and then send them deeper into the solar system. There it is. Tim, thank you for your time, sir. Uh, Dr. Timothy Davis, space expert. Uh, he's from uh, Cardiff Uni University, reader of astrophysics over there. Thank you to him. Uh, there it is. It's a big moment for India uh, in terms of their position in this world, but the Indian moon landing has happened. Nobody's on board uh, this craft, by the way, in case you were wondering. Um, images seem to be eluding the entire global media of the actual landing at the moment. I'm pretty sure the Indian Space Agency at some point will be very, very keen to, uh, to, to get that out there as quick as they can. Prime Minister Modi, very happy. He seems to be addressing the nation, and you saw their mission control. There was big applause and a huge scene of the staff that worked there bursting out, breaking out into huge uh, applause as it happened. So everything was bang on target. It's been up there a while, this thing. Uh, floating around doing its thing. It's finally landed on the moon where it will carry out a series of experiments and have a little mooch around, checking for water on the south pole of the moon. So in, in, in global astronomical terms, there is a huge significance to this. But as our last guest just said, don't expect any time soon that we'll be uh, watching um, people build houses over there. You can see this is the takeoff. This happened in July, I think this first happened. Uh, the takeoff was spectacular. Again, it all went to plan. Uh, they're always rather awesome sights seeing any kind of spacecraft go up like that. Uh, everybody has their fingers crossed for a moment, but that was over a month ago uh, when that took off from Indian soil, made its way into space, has been circling around, uh, doing its various maneuvers as it's there, and finally, the central part of that um, of, of that craft uh, once those rocket launchers had removed themselves as you saw uh, was to land on the moon and uh, literally 10 minutes ago just shy of 10 minutes ago it did precisely that job done as far as the indians are concerned we will see a lot of imagery i'm sure over the coming days as to uh, what it entails and what is gleaned uh, from their various missions and experimentations as they mooch around the surface of the moon. Congratulations to them.